Hi YouTube, this is Angie the Antitheist. I'm responding to a video by the Mud Brooker. Uh, his video is called Torture Your Kids for Jesus. I found him thanks to Godless Panther, so thank you for that promotion video. That was awesome. Uh, listing a bunch of cool YouTube atheists. Michael and Debbie Pearl are the Christian couple who run NoGreaterJoy.org. They are the authors of a truly, truly, truly horrible book that makes Rick Warren's purpose-driven life look like good literature to train up a child. It is a child abuse manual. Um, what's interesting, because after reading the first chapter of it, which I'm going to provide the link so you can go read it for your own horrified selves, um, I then went over to their current website and compared and contrasted some of what they said 20 years ago and what they're saying now that some of their followers have gone to jail after beating their kids to death. Oh, yeah, that's kind of bad press. Let's give them more. Okay, so they have a daughter and when she was four months old, she could crawl and wanted to crawl up the stairs. Rather than getting a baby gate, like normal good parents would strive to do or you know not have stairs accessible no no rather than this we attempted to train her not to climb the stairs by coordinating the voice command of no with little spats on the bare legs the switch was a 12 inch long 1 8 inch diameter sprig from a willow tree four months old people actually take the advice of these people on how to train up a child so that they will be happy, healthy, mentally well, not a sociopath when they grow up? No. No, you train them to be obedient. He refers to, he uses, I'm going to say he because I'm pretty sure Michael's the one writing this. At least in this uh, one sample chapter I was able to find everything's written from the I perspective and uses words like my wife that make me think Debbie didn't write it. Regarding an infant who's being put in a crib and is sad to be being left alone, crying uh, in order to manipulate the adults into constant servitude should never be rewarded. Otherwise, you will reinforce the child's growing self-centeredness, which will eventually become socially intolerable. I just want you to understand the tone, the contempt held for children, the utter depravity of infants. They're, they're manipulative little, little witches, huh? You know, these babies? The inability to comprehend original sin was the experience I had from having a child. I didn't look at him and see this wicked, sinful thing that needed to be brought in line and have his will broken. You know, the way I was raised? Because, oh yeah, my family totally used this book, along with James Dobson's Focus on the Family Bullshit. Yeah, I mean, Bill Gothard. Beating your kids is really, really Christian. Sadly, children need to separate from their parents to have their own identity, to be their own person. There are certain times in a child's development when this is more pronounced. It's also healthy, it's normal, it's recognized by actual child psychologists. But what, do, what does Michael Pearl have to say on the subject? Well, the stubbornness of a small child is profound, amazing, a wonder that one so young could be so dedicated and persevering in rebellion. It is the kind of determination you would expect to find in a hardened revolutionary facing enemy indoctrination classes. Who do you think you are to a child you beat? You are the enemy. And your attempts at brainwashing, at programming and conditioning your children, it's indoctrination. How is this facepalmingly obvious point lost on you? Obedience training, again, for infants, suckling infants, um, when the baby bit, his wife, pulled hair. Understand the baby's not being punished, just conditioned brainwashed. A baby learns not to stick his finger in his eyes or bite his tongue through the negative associations accompanying it. It requires no understanding or reasoning. 
Ah, because you don't require your children to have understanding or reasoning, just obedience, right? Way to train them up to join a cult when they're older. Somewhere in the brain, that information is unconsciously stored. After two or three times of biting, with the accompanying head hurting, let's call it what it is, with the accompanying pulling an infant's hair, an infant incapable of understanding it, but the child programs the information away. The biting habit is cured before it starts. This isn't discipline, it's obedience training. I nursed my son for 18 months for all the health benefits. And you know what? My son got his first tooth at four months. I did not abuse my child. I did not hurt a defenseless and entirely dependent infant in order to protect myself. No, he bit me once. I took away his source of food for 20 minutes. By then he was hungry. The act of, of sucking to eat doesn't work if you're biting down. An infant who's hungry won't bite. There, no abuse required. But like I said, things appear to have moderated slightly or at least have better PR spin these days now that they've had a few high publicity arrests. It's true we occasionally hear young mothers and more seldom fathers take what we teach out of context and misuse their children. Um, for example, if a three month old nursing baby bites, don't spank. She doesn't know she did bad, just gently. She did bad. Oh, I didn't realize it was possible for a three month old to do bad. Just gently pull a hair on her head. She will startle back in momentary discomfort and immediately start nursing again. You have not made her obey, you have only conditioned her to respond differently. The way you want. <laughs> But she says if you take a 13-week-old baby who's fussing and squirming and pop her leg, it will only bring more fussing and crying. The child cannot relate those two events. She most likely has a tummy ache that needs some relief, not added pain. Ask God for wisdom. He promises to give to those who simply ask. In other words, legal disclaimer, if you beat your kids as much as we beat ours and they die as a result of it, we didn't tell you to do that. You were supposed to ask God for wisdom. I don't actually buy that they've changed. I don't actually buy that they think of children less evilly. Now, granted, the book was obviously written by Michael Pearl. This article was written by Debbie. So it may be that there was even just, uh, you know, differences in how they felt about it. I, I don't doubt whose will won out. But a nice PR spin on child abuse doesn't stop it from being child abuse. There is no reason to use corporal punishment. The more we know about child psychology and particularly children with special needs and, and relational disorders, the more important it becomes to find compassionate ways of encouraging cooperation without coercion, abuse, violence, and torture. Everybody on YouTube, have great godless days. Don't beat your kids. Peace.